Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 22 of Road to Colonization, and we start on Minmus. I have a few contracts to do with Minmus. The one you know about is the, uh, um, the mission to build a space station around Minmus and fill it with ore, which this miner has been valiantly doing. And the second one is just to mine 600 units of ore, which I thought I'd take on, because that's really easy, because I already have the miner here. And it was going to do that anyway, so uh, yeah, I don't quite have it right now, but uh, in a little bit um, we'll have uh, kind of 600 units of ore and get a bunch of free money, which is great. I like it when you have something, you can just, you get a contract and you can just do it because you have equipment in places. And that's exactly what happens. After apparently we've mined 150% of the ore from here, um, we do complete the contract. Um, I'm not sure what the 150% thing is about. Yeah, we get our money, all nice, but uh, yeah, it says we've mined 150% of the ore from uh, Sean Cannery's crater or whatever. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't seem to mean we can't keep mining. Maybe there was at some point going to be like a limit in Kerbal Space Program to how much ore you could mine, but it doesn't seem to actually be true. So yeah, I guess we're good. Anyway, moving on from Minmus now, uh, because it still needs to fill up the rest of its tanks. Um, we're just heading over to Duna to check in on this mining operation, which isn't going so well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's happening. Well, no, I am sure what's happening. Basically, there wasn't, uh, there's like, it hasn't really mined much ore or turned much of it into fuel. Um, it hasn't been very effective, and that's still because the thermal efficiency is all messed up. You can see the drill's fine, and it's getting ore, but the ISRU really isn't, um, really isn't, uh, working properly because it only has like 7% thermal efficiency. So I'm going to deploy the other drill and mess around with radiators and see if I can kind of just try and balance thermal efficiency. Although annoyingly I can't actually run both drills and the ISRU because I don't have enough electric charge because Duna is quite far from the sun. So yeah, you can see we're getting slightly closer and um, some numbers are moving around. It looks like the ISRU is getting slightly more efficient, but uh, this is eating into our electric charge, so we can't actually do this. Um, so I'm going to have to find another way to balance this. Um, so my plan was basically just stop one of the drills, maybe um, retract a radiator, see if that helps at all. But basically what that does is just allows um, the other drill to heat up too much and lose its thermal efficiency. And the ISRU doesn't heat up either and it didn't end up balancing out somewhat annoyingly. Um, so yeah, basically in the end I figured out it was actually best just to deploy the drills. Um, deploy both of them and, um, and and turn the ISRU off, mine a bunch of ore and then come back when it's full of ore and um, use the ISRU. So yeah, this uh, piece of equipment isn't actually super fit for purpose and it will take ages to fill up that uh, tanker, but we do have a while and we just need to fill up the Concordia really. Anyway, back on Minmus, we are now full of ore and ready to complete finally the mission um, to put a space station around uh, Minmus and fill it with ore. So uh, yeah, we're gonna head up to the station, deposit it, and get our sweet, sweet 350 grand. It's something like that, 350,000 funds. Um, so yeah, just taken off now, and it, it does take a while with these heavier vehicles with nuclear engines, so you can see this is actually at four times time accelerate now, and it's still going quite slowly, but it's fine, because Minmus is a nice low gravity world. That's really where you want to mine your ore on low gravity worlds, preferably just asteroids, really. It's not a particularly profitable operation in Kerbal Space Program to mine from asteroids and bring it back to Kerbin, because there just isn't that much um, ore on asteroids. There is a limit on asteroids, um, but apparently not on planets. Um, so yeah, we, we just stick with Minmus. I probably should have done my mining operation on Ike and designed the mission to work with that um, around Duna, but um, basically because I also needed to fuel up. On the surface of Duna, I, I couldn't really put my uh, mining operation on Ike uh, because I need to fuel up occasionally on the surface of Duna. And yeah, we kind of want um, the Duna base to be almost like a just a big hub where we can eventually go and just fuel up and fly off to other places, maybe even launch a mission to another planet from um, Duna. That'd be really cool. I do have the things to build stuff on other planets, I just haven't really done much with it, because there's so many things to do when you have a bunch of mods in Kerbal Space Program that sometimes you just forget about features like being able to build rockets in space. Um, anyway, enough of talking about the future, we have arrived at the station now, and now we just need to move towards it. There it is, beautifully hanging in, I was going to say the blackness, but I guess it's kind of in the inky... Um, <laughs> in the inky greenness that is Minmus. 
But anyway, here we are, just moving towards it. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be uh, have a fairly easy time docking. It seems like every time I do these dockings, they get more efficient. The first one, I almost ran out of monopropellant because I was having such a trouble kind of maneuvering this around because the uh, um, because the RCS ports are just kind of jury rigged on here. But now it happens quite quickly um, with minimal effort. And there we are, docked, and we complete our contract. We get our uh, like. Three, I can't actually read on the post-production window, but it's about 300-something grand. And now we actually are at about 2.5 million funds, so we're actually doing pretty well for money. Anyway, once again, hopping back to Duna, uh, we've received another fun, easy mission where we just have to uh, send some science data back from uh, back from Duna. But there's no uplink right now, so we wait for the communication satellite to move into our... Uh, field of view, and then we can transmit the science back, get a bunch of free money, and all is good. It's always nice to get that free money from those contracts where you can just sort of do it. But we are not done on Duna today. Uh, since uh, we brought that new power unit with the big solar panels, we don't need this base to be covered in solar panels anymore to keep it sustaining, so we're gonna get our engineer out and start just taking these off, because they look kind of crap. So I'm gonna take off all the long ones um, and just kind of leave it as it is. I might take off more in the future, because I just don't need these solar panels anymore because as I said I have that giant solar array over there which is providing more than enough power. Um, but yes anyway that's looking a little nicer now so we'll get our Kerbal back into back into the base and we shall be done with Duna for the day um, but now we're heading somewhere else we're arriving at Elu. Yes we are at Elu with uh, the Phoenix 1 the first probe ever sent to Elu. Annoyingly however this probe doesn't actually work and um, we get ourselves a world first for flying past Elu actually which is quite nice However, this probe, um, well, it has some problems. Basically, it's going to, well, has run out of electric charge, because we take a look at this shot from earlier, and you can see that one of the solar panels has become shaded by the spacecraft during its orbit. Additionally to this, um, the Kerbin is on the other side of the sun now, so it's too far away for the communi communications dish to even work for me to be able to reorientate it. So, basically, it's a double wham whammy of fail, and it means that we will just fly right by Elu. Yes, it is quite difficult to do these things when you have remote tech. You have to take a lot of things into account, and uh, things you wouldn't have to usually think about in the Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, let's not think about our failures. Let's think about the fact that we are flying by Elu. I think this is the second mission ever sent towards Elu. I genuinely can't keep track anymore. I just have a bunch of alarms that tell me when things are going to happen. This was probably sent, like, midway through Road to Exploration. So, I mean, who knows? But anyway, we drift down next to Elu, and it does look beautiful. I, I, I very much love Elu. Elu was actually the um, subject of my first KSP series called Elu Base, where I put a base on Elu. It was bad, because I had only just started. Um... <laughs> But if you were so compelled, you could go and listen to my high-pitched voice not talk very well. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we get a nice little shot, which may well be the thumbnail. And uh, now we're just going to drift on by. Just say hi, fly on by, and all is good. Yes, I do have so many probes. You can see how many just probes I have going places. We have a good one coming to uh, Jewel soon. The next probe that will arrive will actually arrive at Elu. And if we are lucky with our communications, it will actually be able to communicate back to Kerbin. So, yes. Anyway, between uh, that little excursion and the vehicle arriving at Eve, we have a few just little maintenance-y things to be doing on Kerbin. So, uh, the first thing is a little bit of orbital cleanup. So, we find this second stage, and we're going to bring it back now. Um, you do, you probably know at this point that my uh, my low Kerbin orbit is so packed with um, so packed with. Uh, with the debris and probes and things that I can kind of barely use the map at this point. Um, so I'm going to start bringing some stuff back. I'm going to start terminating some things in the um, in the tracking station as well. I have this nice vision of me building this thing that collects all of the parts and brings them back and things. And I get the money and it's all very legit. But, um, I, but I'm not going to do that because that would take so long. Um, so what we're going to do is probably land this and then just delete a few things in the tracking station because that will somewhat clean up my low carbon orbit. Um, obviously my whole map is just filled with probes going to planets and things, so there's never going to be a great situation. And a lot of my satellites are communication satellites. Um, here I am just kind of uh, at four times time accelerate, picking up satellites I know that are useless and just terminating them, trying to avoid the uh, communication satellites I have in orbit. Um, I have like, uh, I think about... 
15 small communication satellites I used to deploy on uh, space station missions when I used to head to the Hermes station. I'd deploy little tiny satellites out of the side of my uh, crewed cap rule, and um, that gave me a really solid communications array, allowed, allowed everything to communicate with everything, because I also have some longer range um, things in uh, Keo stationary orbit, um, but yeah, I also have the little array in low carbon orbit, just kind of, you know, makes sure everything can talk to everything. Um, so yeah. Anyway, a little bit cleaned up now and found something that had left the uh, solar system. We're ready to uh, move on uh, because we have another thing to be doing before we head on to EVE. We, uh, we're going to need some more crew because at some point I'm going to be mounting a very big jewel mission. And that'll actually be quite soon. Uh, not on the next jewel window, but probably the one after that. Um, I'd quite like my jewel probe to get to jewel before I send a big mission there. I just feel like that would be more, I don't know, a little realistic, you know? I mean, that's kind of something I try to go for. Um, so, for now, um, we're just going to go and fetch more crew from orbit, because I don't pay for crew, because they're expensive. Um, so, yes, we're sending up our Ares 5, which is our new crew vehicle, which uh, is much better at propulsively landing, and it launches on top of the Pulsar X vehicle, which is our SSTO, which can take about 30 tons of uh, payload to orbit fairly easily. And it's very nice to reuse because, um, well, because it's just one stage. So, anyway... It should push on into orbit now. We've actually uh, almost met the spacecraft at this point, um, but we will do another orbit to meet up with it properly and fetch the Kerbal. This is a seven uh, Kerbal spacecraft, um, which is kind of overkill because I'm only, only picking up two, but I don't really have any other spacecraft except for planes right now, and I didn't really feel like launching a plane for some reason. Um, sometimes it just takes a little longer. Um, so yeah, now it's just a matter of kind of matching our, uh, well, getting an encounter, of course, um, and there we go. Looks like I'm going to meet him on the other side of the orbit and fetch the Kerbal. Now, I'm hoping this will be a scientist, because I have a deficit of scientists. I have a gajillion pilots and a whole bunch of engineers, um, but not nearly enough scientists, which is annoying. Not that I really need scientists anymore, because um, I, I've completed the tech tree. Um, so I guess, actually, pilots would be better. And it does turn out this Kerbal is a pilot, um, which is somewhat annoying. Um, but I don't need scientists anymore. I, I have all of the science. Now, this Kerbal's just stuck in an airlock, which appears to be from a base. So I guess just, yeah, not super great, but <laughs> it's fine. Um, now we'll just bring him back. I, why would you just be stuck in an airlock? Maybe it was like... Uh, yeah, you could be in an airlock where it exploded. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, it would be the perfect place to be. You'd probably be ready to go on EVA. Unless it was the other way and you like it already taken off your spacesuit. Then you'd be like, oh shit, now I'm stuck. But then you can just get back into your spacesuit. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, you know, I know what I was saying. Airlock is a perfect place to... Uh... And you wouldn't take off your spacesuit in an airlock. Why am I arguing with myself about the merits of being stuck in an airlock? I don't know. I'm crazy. Why do you watch this? <laughs> anyway... Yes, the Kerbal is safe no matter what, where she was stuck, or whether or not she was wearing a spacesuit, which clearly she was. I think they're always wearing spacesuits, I mean, unless you get mods to take them off. Um, Kerbals actually don't have clothes, uh, they just have spacesuits. They invented, basically, when they were, like, you know, guys with spears, they looked up at the stars and we were like, that's all I want. They didn't think, nah, let's invent the wheel, or let's invent, you know, nuclear power. They're like, let's go to space right now. And that's all they that's all they ever did. You know, they didn't invent clothes, they invented spacesuits, they didn't invent cars, they invented rockets and planes, you know, it's cool. Anyway, <laughs> bit of a bit of fake KSP law right there. Um, but anyway, it looks like we will be landing now. And I'm going to attempt a propulsive landing, somewhat dangerous, especially because I haven't actually uh, installed K KOS right now, which would make it very easy to land. Um, so yeah, we're coming in a little hot, so I do deploy the parachutes. We don't slow down quite enough. There's a bit of an explosion, but we've got enough cushioning that we're all right. We just lose a heat shield and maybe an engine and some landing legs, but all is good. And we recover the spacecraft, get the Kerbal into our crew, the pilot, the new pilot who will be flying many a thing, and we get paid for saving her, which is always a nice little bonus, but mostly it's just to get free crew. Um, so yeah, there we go. And then we bring the booster back, of course, because uh, we need that money. We need that money. Uh, also, don't want to clutter up uh, low carbon orbit after I just spent all that time cleaning it up. But that's landed now, and we can move over to the Concordia. Yes, our glorious spacecraft. Already a veteran spacecraft of Duna, of a glorious Duna mission. The first ever Kerbal interplanetary mission is now getting ready to head on to its... Well, not getting ready. It's heading on to its second mission to uh, EVE. And we have not much left to do. Uh, we don't have much to do between now and when it arrives at EVE, so we're just going to time warp to the um, maneuver node, something I rarely do. Usually I fill the time between transfers um, with 
you know, other missions, which is why these series take so long. Um, but yeah, now we don't have much to do. We've, we've done all of the science, we've, we've completed most of our contracts, and it's mostly, you know, about going, going to other places now, going to Jewel, um, going to Eve and stuff. So anyway, we do need to do our plane change and tweak so that we will meet um, Eve in its orbit and be able to... You know, go and rendezvous. So here we are, just uh, firing up the engines. We actually got a um, contract there. We completed a world first there for um, the first ever flyby. Uh, the first ever escape from Elu from that probe from earlier. Apparently, has just escaped Elu. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yes, anyway, we're just using the nuclear engines now to uh, push ourselves on into uh, put, well, push ourselves on into the correct orbit to meet Eve, and all is good. The uh, big booster engine, of course, is out of fuel. That's just used for escaping um, for escaping uh, Kerbin, and it's actually surprisingly easy to escape Eve. I don't exactly know why. Usually, probably because I leave myself in higher orbits, but. Um, yeah, we should have more than enough Delta V to get home. I checked earlier just then, I think I'm setting up an alarm or something, uh, that I do have enough few, uh, enough life support as well, because the uh, Eve to Kerbin transfer window's in about a year and a half. But yeah, we do have enough life support for this whole mission. Everything is still good. Um, I did check before I left, but yeah. Anyway, we've got ourselves a nice encounter, and we'll just drift in now. We've got a little, a few, we've got about 50 days to go. Again, I have no other missions currently running. Um, so uh, here we are, r at Eve. Yes, we've found ourselves an encounter. You can see me looking around for it and be like, oh yeah, it's the big purple one. <laughs> so there we are, looking beautifully at Eve. And now we'll drift in. I love the, I love planet falls. They just look so good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I think Eve is one of my favorite planets. Even Duna looks so amazing. Although obviously Jewel is definitely the coolest with all of its moons. And But annoyingly, Floating Point Error has attacked us and we are in a very wrong trajectory. And we were much closer to Eve before, but now we're at about 1.5 million um, meters periapsis, which is not great. So I try and bring it in, but then I'm like, what am I doing? This is this is pretty inefficient. I just need to get into orbit, and it won't actually take that much fuel. It's surprisingly easy to get from uh, Kerbin to Eve. I think it's, oh well, from Eve to Kerbin. I think it's only about 600 meters per second delta V. Um, actually don't know why. Well, if I was in low orbit around Eve, it would be more. But yeah, it's, I guess, Oberth effect. If I say enough space words, you guys will think I'm smart and it's cool. Yeah, it's uh, the Oberth effect in the uh, the magnitude of the of the quantum vector. That's why. That's 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 why it's so little delta v. <laughs> I actually don't know. I would have thought from a heavier planet it would uh, take more delta v, but I guess I'm not getting into a low orbit. Maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. Um, I, I can't be bothered to figure this out right now. But anyway, we do get ourselves into Orbit of Eve quite nicely, and we're going to bring it down. Um, we also have a mission to go to Gilly, of course, um, which is just there, and it looks like our Apoapsis is going to be well-placed to meet Gilly. Although I actually think I do pull this into a circular orbit, um, because... Well, I'm also going to be dropping a probe into uh, Eve's atmosphere. Hopefully this one won't explode. We've never got anything to the surface of Eve, which is actually, uh, I guess, somewhat realistic, because nothing ever survives going into... Um, Venus's atmosphere, so yeah, we'll just call it that. It's super hot in there, not that I never get my heat shields right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the Eve thing has been a farce in this uh, space program. But yeah, you can see I can get to um, get to Kerbin with minimal delta V, so we shouldn't have any problems getting home. Um, and it will have less weight on it, because we won't have that probe. Um, so all is good. Yeah, there we are, in orbit of Eve. It's not perfect orbit right now. I'm going to fix that next time when I'm sure about what I want to do. But yes, here we are, all four Kerbals, um, Jeb, Val, Bob and Bill, all at Eve, on the Concordia, the glorious veteran spacecraft. We'll be uh, dropping probes into into Eve's atmosphere and sending landers to Gilly to complete various missions and stare at various beautiful sights, and it'll all be fantastic, but it will also all be in future episodes. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I think I, this has been pretty fun. There's been a bunch of stuff. There's been Duna, there's been Elu, fuck yeah. There's been Eve, there's been... Kerbin, obviously, Minmus, yeah. We've been to a lot of places today. I'm, uh, yeah, I had fun. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. This has been episode 22 of Road to Colonization. Hopefully, the next episode will be coming out much sooner. There was a big gap between, uh, last episode and, and this episode. But y you all, if you saw my video, you know why I took a big break. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you for bearing with me, and I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tate. I will see you next time.